Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Jay Strovey, RealAgriculture.com, and we're here for another episode of The Wheat School, and I'm joined again by Dr. Brian Bears, AAFC Lethbridge. And today we're talking seeding rates. What do we need to know? One of my favorite topics. Um, well, it's evolved in the last um, several years, um, and, and for a few different reasons. One is, you know, in the old days, we tended to be a little bit low on seeding rates, and and we also had back then lower genetic potential for yield and, and in the last decade plus we've seen quite a significant rise in genetic potential for yield with some of these newer varieties and and just like some other crops like corn where plant populations needed to be adjusted to exploit that new genetic um, potential I, th I think that's part of the reason why, why the studies we've conducted have shown real positive yield responses with some of these new you know and, and case of today spring wheat like CWS varieties and so to match that genetic potential um, there's a need for a revisit and so we're seeing we're seeing new genetics um, new varieties really responding well to um, what used to be considered um, a, a far far way too high rate such as for example 450 seeds per square meter or 445 seeds per square foot and um, and that's important because if you're half that for example you might see similar yields in similar situations but you don't get those other um, potential benefits around increased crop competitiveness with weeds and and so on um, uniformity that's a real big one with um, with situations where you want more of those main stems in your field um, and that makes your for example your fungicide applications more eff efficacious or effective um, and that's going to help you withstand certain diseases, particularly fusarium and so on. So there's a lot of good reasons to be shooting for a high rate of around 40 to 45 seeds per square foot now, with, particularly with those newer genetics. And, and we really do like to focus on seeds per unit area. And with that, starting with making sure you've confirmed you've got a seed lot that's healthy, uh, that you've got good germ, good vigor, and you know the kernel weight because since we've lost kernel visual distinguishability or KVD in 2008, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, um, we do see more variation in seed size and shape within a same market class. And so if you don't know your kernel weight um, or you're still abiding by the old bushels per acre thing, um, you could be way off in what you think you're putting in the ground compared to what you actually did. And so start with that kernel weight. Um, focus on the seeds you're putting in the ground because that's what you have control over. There's a lot of talk around plants that emerge. Well, once, once you've planted, you don't have a whole lot of control. Mother Nature kind of gets to take over at that point. So we want to see a focus on the seeds going into the ground. And then that will guarantee that you're coming up with plants that are in a certain threshold that we want, which, are, which is a desirable. And that desirable range you know, is, is right around 30 plants per square foot, I would say. Um, a little less is fine. Um, a little little more than that is, is okay too. All right, so would there be any adjustment as we move from ideal timing to, to say, late timing? Um, well, what, what comes later, right? Uh, what comes later is we now have warmer soils, if we're talking about a spring wheat situation. Um, the thing that we're going to be battling with the later seeding dates really isn't anything around, you know, concerns or issues about planting or the plants that emerge. What it is is like, I need this thing to mature as fast as I can now uh, because it's not going to be matched very nice to, um, you know, our summer solstice anymore. And so the photosynthetic machine needs to get up out of the ground and we want as, as fast as we can good canopy closure so that that starts pumping and converting that radiation into into yield and that that is achieved by a high seeding rate because what we know is that if you have a nice 
high seating rate of 40 to 45 seats per square foot. What that achieves is you're probably going to be able to shorten down the flowering period and you're going to probably be harvesting up to a week earlier compared to say dropping that by 25 30 percent and you say you're in a range of 25 to 30 seeds per square foot for example and 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 again it's you gain you gain in an earlier harvest but you also gain in uniformity at harvest which is a real big advantage over those um, those lower seeding rates. Mm -hmm.